really enjoying this uh, Shark Tank too. It's been a lot of fun. It is an interesting league, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, it's one of those that I was planning on uh, adding a league this year. I didn't think it would be something nearly this complicated, but hey, once you get started, it's uh, you're kind of in it, right? I added this and uh, AD3, so. Oh, yeah? Learning all the NCAA stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, that's what I like. I like a lot of the college stuff. I've always been a, a college guy more so than the pros. So, you know, for me, having a Debbie portion of, of the league is a lot of fun. So I like that. Yeah. Get to see those college kids that you watch that are, you know, especially a league like this, you're going to have pretty deep rosters. You're going to get some guys on there that don't get to play a lot. So it'll be yeah. pretty fun stuff. But, yeah, man, so I, I've been planning this kind of a goofy little uh, interview deal. Um, I don't know if you have something set up, too, where you can interview me if you wanted to try to get your your stuff in there. But otherwise, I can I can do mine, too. Um, you may as well start. I'll, uh, if I come up to it, then I'll hit you up. But. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to do this little segment. I'm calling it Direct Indirection. So my name is Kyle LaPointe. And I'm a co-host on the fun little Dynasty podcast called Dynasty Self-Help. So we help you analyze your team, your game, and yourself in an effort to provide a more rich and fun little hobby. It's, it's kind of fun for us. So um, today, though, I'm going to examine 10 key aspects of your Shark Tank 2 current roster and follow that up with a question. So okay. Please keep in mind that I'm going to be very direct, so to the point, brutally honest in a lot of cases, and the questions are not necessarily going to be easy. So is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> awesome. All right, so before we get into the meat of this potato, I'd like to ask you just a few things. What's your uh, name in real life? Uh, it's Brandon Lewis. Brandon Lewis, okay. So in Shark Tank 2, we are uh, named for No Guts, No Glory Daredevils. What's your chosen name and why? My name is Frank the Tank Man. So it's kind of a play on old school and the, yeah. the tank man that stopped the revolution over in Asia. So. Nice. Yeah. All right. So uh, do you do any uh, fantasy writing or any podcasts of your own? I don't. I've, I've written some trial articles, but work and kids and life gets oh. pretty busy. So. Yeah, I totally understand that. So where and do you I'm, live in the world here these days? I live up in uh, Kamloops, BC, up in Canada. Nice. So we have before, people... before this, I was up in Tumblr Ridge, a town of 2,000 in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, originally from Detroit, so not too far from uh, Canada there, but uh, yeah, that's a little further from me. Yeah. Uh, down in Texas now, so. Oh, nice. All right, so I'm a beer guy. Do you have a favorite style of beer? Favorite style of stout. Nice. So I have... Uh, four championship trophies for brewing stouts. So uh, oh, nice. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Um, final question. What is your favorite thing about fantasy hockey? Fantasy hockey? <laughs> <laughs> well, fantasy hockey is Canadian, so obviously got to enjoy that. Oh, yeah. No, I love it. I, my favorite part, penalty minutes count towards your score. So, you know, you got to be a nitty gritty, which I love it. Yeah, that's where those Luchiches come in handy. Damn straight. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for hard-hitting analysis and some drama-laden questions. You ready? You betcha. All right. Anthony Miller showed a lot of promise last year playing the Chicago, with the Chicago Bears. Trubisky, not known for being an ambi thrower, can only throw to one side of the field. This typically scares a lot of owners away from pass catchers playing for the Chicago Bears. But with the Bears acquiring foals, are you worried about the fallout for Oliver or Eifert? For Oliver or Eifert, I think, I think Josh Oliver has the youth, so he's going to be able to make that connection um, with the, the mustache over there in Jacksonville. So I don't think that's going to hurt him as much. And Eifert can't seem to stay healthy. They, I think they'll take a similar approach with his <clears throat> number of minutes. So, But keeping both of them on my roster gives me the options as Minshew Mania takes off. I like it. All right. So the most talented running back on your roster is Adrian Peterson. You only have three running backs. The 17-year locust is also known by what name? The plague? The cicada. Cicada. Hmm. All right. So in this startup draft, you received $2,000. 
you spent 501 or about 25% on two San Francisco players, Kittle and Debo. In this intrepid time, are you a little worried about the COVID virus and its intense localization in the Bay Area having an adverse impact on the potentially heavy asset allocation that you are in this market sector? Not at all. Uh, That is the correct answer. Okay. I'm looking (laughs) at your quarterbacks in alphabetical order. By first name, it starts with Andy Dalton. By last name, it starts with Kyle Allen. If you had to defend these QBs in five words or less, what language would you defend them in? Hmm. Guess it would have to be Mandarin. Okay. Well, that'd be difficult. I wouldn't speak that language. All right. So it looks like you have Jace Sternberger, who was nominated by accident when a player actually typed Jake Stormburner. So what does the acronym NIMBY mean? I have never heard the acronym, so. That is not in my backyard. Not in my backyard. Okay, so I see you have, (laughs) you've picked up a potential (laughs) early draft bus, J-Jaw from the Philadelphia Eagles. How do you actually pronounce his name? J.J. Arcega Whiteside. Is it Arcega? I've heard people say Arcega. I just call him Jaws. So Jaws. I I think he said it's Arcega, but. But we don't listen to him. It's kind of like uh, Tyrod or Tyrod. With you know, when they yeah. tell us five years late, it's like it's too late, man. We already call you Tyrod. Exactly. All right. So you currently have a wide receiver core with ten players. Most of those players have only been drinking alcohol for a short amount of time. If they were drinking 126 proof rum, what would the base fermentable be for that drink? Oh, what is it for rum? I'm not a. I'm a rye whiskey drinker so what is it out of cuba <laughs> you're getting there it's pretty close the answer is sugar cane sugar cane so i see you That's opted probably to pick why up... i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> i see you opted to pick up eight linebackers already that is a tried and true strategy for idp leagues or is it I've uh, dabbled in a lot of IDP, and I wanted some high floor guys, but also some high variants. And I think I got some quality quality in there with the eight of them. Yeah, you uh, got a few people, few yeah, people you, struggling to get any. So, yeah, you got you got a pretty good uh, core there with that linebacker core, especially since we're starting three or four of them. That's quite a bit. So, yeah, I love like the four four three. So, yeah. All right, so your focus seems to be quantity over quality as you have a tremendous amount of terrible football players on your roster. This seems like a viable strategy. However, it does pose a risk. In the game of risk, what is the conversion ratio of infantry to cavalry? Three to one, five to one, three to one. Five to one. I'm going to give it to you. That's pretty good. You got it in the, yeah, I'll give you that one. All right, so looking over your roster, there are some obvious strategies that pop out. It seems you have a thoughtful and thorough approach to this league and you'll likely end up winning most weeks. How many times have other people told you that? Zero. That would be right. Never, never. (laughs) All right. So that's all I got for today. I really appreciate your candid and truthful answers to my insightful and hard hitting analysis. Yeah, you betcha. Thanks. I look forward to beating you in the league. Man, this is going to be a fun league. I'm really looking forward to it. It's, uh, you know, I mean, I feel like, just the draft is, you know, part of the competition. I mean, it's so neat. So, you know, seeing yeah. what everybody's doing. The blind bid is quite interesting. Uh, this, you know, I thought I had done a blind bid when somebody was explaining what, oh, yeah, I've done that because I've done all kinds of different stuff. But I have not. Done. This is my first blind bid straight auction, and I love it. It's like every day at noon, it's Christmas time. Like, oh, <laughs> who did I get? Who did I not get? Yeah. Yeah, how much did I overspend? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the desire to be the fifth person to get the guy, that's like, that's the best, right? When you get, when you get him and you're the top of the heap, you're like, eh, I wasted some money. I left some money on the table. But when you're the bottom, it's like, oh, yeah, I just barely out or eked out everybody else in there and got my guy at the lowest cost I could. So. Hey, betcha. Well, it's fun stuff, man. So you guys shelter in place up there? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We- I got to go to work every so often, but um, yeah. we've been home this just this week. It's been 
sort of lock up tight. So it's crazy. The whole globe, man. It's, you know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. There's lots, lots to consider with how they're approaching it, but and the, uh, question I always have as a, as a business guy is, you know, is the certain death of the economy worth the potential death of the people in the economy? I don't know. It's, it's a question I'm glad I don't have to answer, right? It's, yeah. it's the 1% keep getting further ahead. Mm -hmm. But that's why we got fantasy football to take our minds off it. Man, this, this has been a great release from, uh, from the day to day and the pressures that build and, you know, the having to be cooped up with a bunch of folks that you don't normally have to be cooped up with, even though you love them. It's like, man, love my family. <laughs> well, you've seen the reports out of China that the divorce rate skyrocketed once they're allowed out of quarantine, right? So. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're hearing stories of uh, like gun violence and domestic violence inside the house being at higher rates than they've ever been. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My wife tolerates me, though. We got a little bit of land here, a bunch of animals, so... You know, we're able to at least keep outside when I have to stay inside. Time of year is pretty good for it, I guess. Yeah, we're just seeing the last of the snow melt, and our two animals are outside running around right now. So. No, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, dogs then? No, the two kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, those animals? Yeah. <laughs> nice when they can get away, get outside. Yeah. They're cooped up. I can't imagine some of these places that are, that are in the uh, midst of winter or – you know, having situations where they can't get outside right now. Like in an apartment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, uh, so the guy that might be doing some producing on some of this stuff that produces our uh, podcast, he's been a friend of mine for a lot of years, but he's in New York City. So they're oh. literally stuck in an 800 square foot apartment in Times Square. It's like, or if, no, I couldn't even at imagine. Least, at least right now they're getting their money's worth, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you spent a lot of money on the 800 square feet there. Yeah, just uh, to sleep in it. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you jumping on here. It was a lot of fun. You bet. Yeah, you All bet. right. Thank you, Brandon. Okay. Peace.